Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Evelyn Bangadistra. I am a bioinformatician at the Mayan Lab here at Mount Sinai. And today, as I've mentioned, we will be discussing or learning about knowledge graph and how to use it for biomedical data. Um, so many complex data sets can actually be represented as interconnected networks. So I'm not sure if you are familiar with this idea of the six degrees of separation um, with Kevin Bacon, but um, the basic idea is these are actor collaborations. And um, the idea is that many actors or most actors are actually connected with Kevin Bacon with at least six degrees of separation. At least that's what they said. <clears throat> um, you can actually extend this idea with um, collaboration between authors of publications and journals. Uh, so this one, is a, a subnetwork of connections between co-authors, um, between um, Albert Barabasi, as well as like other like uh, other authors. Um, for like computer scientists and mathematician, we have this thing called like the Erdős number, wherein the idea there is how far are we, um, collaboration wise with um, Paul Erdős, which is like this uh, mathematician. Um, yeah, so they have some people are keeping track with like their number, like degree of separation. My number is three. So yeah, that's just a fun fact. Um, and we also have um example for bio more biological example. Here is like the protein protein interaction network for ACE2. So I'm not sure if people are familiar with string TB, but this is just a great resource for viewing um, protein protein interactions. Uh, you can just type your um, gene in there and then it will give you like this kind of network from like different evidence. <laughs> so um knowledge graphs actually enables um, viewing connections between multiple entity types. So here you can just see how it looks like. So you can see connections between people, uh, paintings, um, you know, the loop, how, how is Lily connected with Paris and Eiffel Tower. And you were able to make sense of this different node types, different entity types. So a person, painting, how are they connected based on like these edges? And you can extend that, you know, like in the biological um, a lens, I guess, uh, by looking at maybe we have like a gene. How is a gene connected with a drug? And how is this drug connected with like a disease or like a tissue or, you know, like how are all of these different kind of entities are connected? Um, what are the associations that are, co that are connecting these uh, different types of biological entities, biomedical entities together? <laughs> so, and uh, I'm dialing back a bit. So um, I, I heard that last week you learned about, or last time you learned about uh, gene set enrichment analysis. <clears throat> and as a, a crucial part of the gene set enrichment analysis are these gene set libraries. So the idea here is that um, we have these libraries and uh, these libraries connect terms. For example, this one is uh, from the geobiological process. So the term is the novo AMP biosynthetic process. And how is it? What are the genes that are associated with this term? So this um, basically is conne connections between or associations between a term and a set of genes. So these are the genes basically that are associated with this geobio uh, geobiological process term. And with this, this is the basic premise of Enricher, actually, <clears throat> wherein we were able to go to like different resources. We were able to extract um chat. Um oh um so we we're able to like create gene set libraries from different resources. So this includes geobiological process, MJM Mammalian phenotype. We have um information within drug uh, gene relationships, phenotype relationship, disease relationship, you know, like different kinds of relationships, um, transcription factors, and we were able to provide um, enrichment analysis over like 400 different um, gene set libraries from different resources. And this is just a useful tool for like making sense of like an input gene set based on prior knowledge. And... Um, so Enricher also contains this um, feature called the Enricher gene set. So <clears throat> the idea is um, looking for a gene, for example, ACE2, what term is actually, con uh, what terms or what uh, annotated terms contains that gene as, um, as part of its gene set. So what are the associated terms, basically? 
And um, you also have the enrichment term search. So this enrichment enrichment term search, you can search a term. For example, this one, breast cancer, and it will return to you different um the different resources or different gene set libraries that contains um that annotated term. And then you can also click on this, and then you're able to download the gene set associated with that uh, term. Um, so this is actually proven to be a really useful and enricher is actually one of our one of our more popular um tools in the lab. But um imagine what if instead of looking at it on like a different uh viewing enrichment analysis or on like separate on separate libraries or separate gene set libraries like the one we saw earlier in here, what if we can have like an integrated view of this wherein we can combine you know, um we can combine information on ontology, genes, drugs, diseases, cell types, and pathways on like a, a subnetwork, like of like an enriched network that we can see like, oh, this ontology is like uh is overlapping with the cell types from this uh based on like this genes. You can potentially get more integ uh, more information visually based on like uh, when you see it as a more interconnected uh network, right? Like by employing this knowledge graph. So this is actually the idea that we have for enrichment KG or enrichment knowledge graph. What we did is we converted some of the more popular um enricher libraries. Um, so we contain information on ontologies, genes, drugs, diseases, cell types, and pathways, and we converted it into knowledge graphs. So we have like over 20 genes library currently in there. And um, using this approach, we were able to provide like this integrated gene set enrichment analysis, which I'm gonna show it in a bit. And then gene and term theory, we're in have start with the gene and you're gonna start with a term, and then you it will return with you like the immediate neighbors of that term or that gene. Similar to like the gene search, um, gene search and the term search thing we'd have earlier, I showed earlier, and then something new here is we can also look at the paths between terms or genes. That means you know if I have like two genes, what are the overlapping terms that these two genes search? Um, two genes search, or maybe if I have two terms, you know, like two annotated terms. So what are the overlapping genes between these two terms? You can see, you can see um, visually by using this feature, which I'm going to show you in bed. So as I mentioned, uh, so uh, with Enmature KG, we were able to connect genes and terms from different libraries. And this one, this just shows an enrichment analysis using um, APOE4 carrier upregulated genes. So APOE is this, this is a polymorphic gene associated with late onset Alzheimer's disease. And um, here, we took upregulated APOE4, APOE4 carrier gene set from a paper and performed enrichment analysis on these libraries. So, um, and what we find is consistent with like the paper that we took, uh, that um, the gene set, we find cholesterol-related enriched pathways from KEG and Wicke pathway, which is uh, yeah, as I mentioned, consistent with the previous study. And then we also found terms include uh, related with cell cycle and immune activation. And these are actually unknown terms to be um uh key molecular me mechanism for Alzheimer's disease. So yeah, with that, you can see here how we're able to like see different um how we were able to see like different this different um um resources and how are they connected, what genes are they connected in. So you can easily inspect so what genes um are connected with each other with like these terms or whatnot in a more visual way compared to like uh, the bar graphs we have earlier. And as I mentioned, we have like the single term search wherein the idea is uh you know you have you start with a gene, you can start with also a term and then it will show you like the immediate neighbors. Um, of that term or, or, or of that gene and basically what are the associations, what are the immediate associations of that term or that gene. So for example, we have here GFAP. So there was this recent paper that um, that shows um, the GFAP is actually like a really efficient biomarker uh, for dementia. Like at least 10 years in advance, it can actually predict dementia. So I just inputted, so what do we know from G um, GFAP, from human phenotype ontology and geobiological process? And you can see here terms like um, development regression and also demyelination that's kind of also like um, related uh, with dementia and Alzheimer's.
<laughs> and here is the two term search. So the two term search basically um what it does is it looks at um the shortest paths between two terms. Uh, so for example, in this example, um I looked at dementia, vascular dementia, and GFAP. So here are the terms that are um shared between them. This is the shortest paths between them. So um so we can see terms like memory impairment, which actually kind of related um with um, dementia and GFAP. So here are just some of the features. Of course, this is a term in a gene, but if you have like two genes or two terms, you can actually see like overlapping genes or overlapping terms between them. So that can also be like proved useful for your analysis. <clears throat> so to do this, um, as I mentioned, we actually converted this gene set libraries to knowledge graphs. So to do that, how we did that is that for example, this is your um, gene, set, like, uh, gene set, so the novo post translational protein folding, and here are the gene set. So what we did is, yeah, this this term is associated with this, with this different gene, so we just did that. So that's how we converted it. So this is the term, and then we put point an arrow to like the respective genes that it's disconnected to. And then imagine that each of this gene is also connected with like the term that it is associated with. So not only the novo, so for example, um, DNA JC7 is not only connected with the novo post-translational protein folding, it's also connected, connected with like different terms from different libraries. And that's how we actually built um, this enriched knowledge graph that we have. So um, in a different project, so, but it's also kind of related, but it's a more, um, specific use case, if you will. Uh, we have this paper published in Communication Medicine where we, in, where we look at the connections between birth defects, drug and small molecules, as well as genes and proteins. And we use information from CDC, API Anatomy, um, Drug Shot, which looks at uh, information uh, or like drugs, uh, drug conventions from literature. So we search for birth defects and we look at the drug conventions. We look at Drug Central, uh, RD Kit, Links, which looks at um, the effect of a drug to like a gene expression. So we look at that. Uh, Arches 4, which looks at gene gene um, co expression. We look at Decipher, Gene Shot, also Gene Convention, HPO, it has uh, information on um, uh, phenotypes. So we combined all of this information from these different resources and created a knowledge graph. So the idea is, we were able to predict or, you know, like look at connections between drugs, uh, uh, birth defects, and uh, and genes so that we can actually make a prediction with our, uh, on how um, a drug can potentially affect, um, like can co potentially cause actually birth defects. And here, we just see um, like the two-term search that I was saying earlier, like connections between valproic acid and spina, and the uh, and the birth defect spina bifida. But yeah, the, the idea here is we're able to you know combine this information and uh, look at the molecular mechanisms and uh, the underlying molecular mechanisms between the connections between drugs, birth defects, and genes. And it's much uh, it's actually like um, more apparent in here. So here, what you're seeing is that we look at clicks. So um, clicks in um, basic terms is just are just for here, it's just triangles. So these are triangles between drugs, genes, and birth defects. So these are like interconnected. It's, it's kind of a loop that means that, oh, this drug um, uh, um, affects this gene for some based on one resource. And then this gene also is connected with like a birth defect and this birth defect is affected with a drug. So that means, you know, this might explain some underlying molecular mechanism that causing this drug to cause this birth defect. So maybe this drug is perturbing this gene in some way or another that is causing that birth defect. And this is actually what they're showing here. We're showing like this triangles of um drug gene and birth defects. And uh, yeah, just showing like these underlying mechanisms. Um, yeah, so I've showed you two of our previous projects we've published, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just want to ask if you can maybe think of maybe use cases from your research project wherein viewing data as connected networks can um, maybe be useful. So, you know, anything that, um, anything that, you know, where you can view 
it as a network, whether it's like a disease side effect, uh, I don't know, like if can you give me like examples from your projects maybe of where you can take some viewing things as a network can be useful? Anyone? I don't have an actual example, but maybe if you're trying to, you know, ship out a drug, yeah, you're just trying to look at some possible adverse effects that might be, uh, you know, might be useful to see what what genes are being acted on, or maybe like even at the protein level, you could do this too. Yeah, exactly. So you can, whenever you know, whenever there are like data that there's association between like different entities, it, it can definitely prove a little bit is a bit useful to like view these things uh, as a network, so that you can see like how are these things interconnected with each other. And uh, yeah, thanks for that example. And um.